Hello everyone. Um, my name is Mikaela Valletta. I hope you all are doing well today. Um, today I'm going to um, speak about how to choose a nani egg, also known as a yoni egg. Um, I am doing this video in two places, uh, on IG Live, on my um, nani eggs page, and also um, I'm recording this video for YouTube. So it would be in both places, so i got two cameras going on, so please excuse me as I look back and forth. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with my work, um, I have been uh, working with Nani Eggs, also known as Yoni Eggs, for 12 years now, so since 2005. And um, when I first, and I started, you know, I've been teaching women for 10 years, and there's so much I've learned from teaching. Um, when I first started working with them back in 2005, it was only like a couple people that were um, te uh, selling them and talking about it, and I didn't have much information. Um, but the people that were were only selling jade, right? And so I started off working with jade first uh, for the first two years, and then um, as time went on, I started experimenting with different crystals and stones on my own. Um, in, in, in New Orleans was one city that was really important. I would spend so much time there and um, I would pass crystal stores and I'd be like, oh, let me try to work, let me, let me see this tiger, tiger's eye egg. Let's see the rose quartz. You know, let's see um, red jasper. And I started working with different ones of my own. And so um, I get a lot of questions from women, you know, that ask me like, oh, how do I choose? You know, I, I've never worked with it before. How do I choose an egg? And I always tell women that it's better for you to choose on your own. I can give you some basic information, which is really more about the sizes um, that I think that you need to know at first. But in terms of like which stone to work with, um, I don't think that that's something that one person can tell you. And I don't think that it's something like it's a one size fits all thing. Like, for example, I know women who will contact me and they tell me uh, that um, they're suffering from trauma. You know, it could be sexual trauma or something really sad happened and they're like, which one should I work with? Well, in my experience, I've seen women, like I've, I've seen like 10 women with the same issue, like 10 different women, hey Sakina, um, 10 different women that may be suffering from the same issue, like let's say sexual trauma. One may decide to work with black obsidian. One may decide to work with rose quartz. Another one might decide uh, adventuring. And I've seen them um, all have like similar outcomes or receive healing properties for the same issue um, and they work with different stones and see someone just said that their first egg was a peach moonstone yeah like it doesn't um, there's there's so okay so there one thing that I could say that I've noticed is that even though I don't want to give women recommendations there are times that they women would kind of like force me to and whenever I did they never would really take they, they would never go with what I said but what I did notice is that there are certain ones that just resonate with them. Like they would see a certain crystal or stone and it just spoke to them and they just were like, you know, they were caught by it. And women can tend to overthink things. So some women want to like sit and know the name of each stone. They want to go research it to death and think which one do I need. I suggest doing it the opposite, you know. Like, I mean, maybe there's already a stone that you're looking for. But if you see a bunch of crystals and, and, and there's one that just catches your eye and is resonating with you, I suggest, like, that's, you know, t working with that one and then going and researching what that one is about. And it will teach you a lot because sometimes that's the medicine you need and you may not even know it. It's very mystical um, how it works. And so um, one thing that, that you know, the, the basic information I like to give women, which is in my Egg Basics video on uh, YouTube, is about the sizes. And there's a lot of myths about sizes and stuff like that. So, um, you know, there are... I suggest starting with a medium or a large egg, right? The other one. And so a medium egg is about an inch and a half in length, and a large is about two inches, you see? A little bit different. They can vary in diameter. Um, some of them are fatter, some of them are more narrow, but the length is the length is how I define it. Now, there are other people who sell eggs, like the, the past couple years, who what they call a medium is what I call a large. So I've had people order eggs for me, and they're like, they order a medium, and then they're like, you sent me a small. I'm like, that's not a small. A small is a lot smaller than that. I don't recommend starting with a small, because a small is about fine-tuning movements. Um, I have a YouTube video about that, too. But once you're able to, um, you know feel the egg and you can sense it and you're able to get some control over your muscles, like you're able to push, ooh, sorry, 
you're able to push the egg left and right and front and back and you're able to move it and you're getting control in different parts of your vaginal canal, that is the time to me to start to work with a small egg. It like fine tuned sensitivity. But however, that's not a be all end all because I remember many years ago, like back in 2009, I taught a class in Atlanta and uh, back then I wasn't even selling yoni eggs, uh, nani eggs. I um, didn't start selling them until uh, 2010. I started teaching women in 2007. So back in 2009, there was a um, uh, a girl who took my class in Atlanta, and she was having like she didn't, she couldn't afford an egg at the time, but she was having really bad like menstrual cramps and really bad anger issues during her menstrual cycle. And she had this little red jasper stone. It wasn't even an egg; it was kind of egg shaped, but technically it wasn't an egg, and it was a little bit smaller. And that's all she had. And, and she resonated with it. I said, go ahead and work with it. And I remember her writing me like two weeks, two or three weeks later after the class. And she told me that like that next menstrual cycle that came, she noticed big differences. Like she wasn't as angry as she used to be. And it wasn't that she was 100% healed, but she had noticed improvement. So that, that, that showed me that, you know, even though working with that little tiny stone may not have given her more strength, it's not going to, it's not heavy enough to make your muscles stronger. Um, she couldn't really feel it, so it's not going to increase her sensitivity, but it's still a stone. It still has healing properties. And so that stone is still going to have its healing properties with you, in, inside of you and in your body, in your energy fields. So it still, had, it still did something, okay? So that's why I'm not going to say 100% across the board not to start working with the small. But if you're really, uh, your goal is to really get stronger and to get more sensitivity, I would not suggest working with the small, either a medium or a large. Now... Some people think that, uh, that um, uh, you know, in order to work with a large, you have to have had babies, and that's not true either. So this video is kind of like myths. I'm, I'm dealing with some myths uh, about choosing eggs. Um, there are women that have given birth to four or five babies vaginally, and they get a medium-sized egg, they put it in, and it stays in, fine, no problem. I've also seen women who've never had a baby who put an egg in and just falls out. Um, and which is like, in my experience, like maybe 10% of women, the egg falls out um, right away. And if that happens, that's a sign that you really need to work on your strength, you know, because it should be more like a tampon where you put it in and it stays there and you don't really feel it at first. You don't start feeling it until you, your sensitivity increases. Now, unless you're using a large one and it's a lot of stress, like let's say your muscles aren't necessarily strong enough for that large and, and, and you feel the stress and you feel the weight of it, then you'll feel it. But once you become stronger, you won't feel it anymore. Then feeling it is about sensitivity. Like for me, I could put like three, four eggs inside of me. I don't feel it. But if I tune in to feel it, I feel it. Because it's like my muscles are strong, so it's not, that weight is not putting stress in my muscles anymore. Um, so for me to feel it, I have to tune in and like feel where it is. Um, and so as your muscles, just like with any other muscles in your body, as your muscles get stronger, you need to increase the weight if you want to increase your strength. And I have other YouTube videos where I talk about that. Um, one is called Yoni Egg Progressions. So, so yeah, I always recommend just to know the basics about, you know, um, medium and large. Like the large egg is easier to feel because it's bigger, but it's heavier. So it, it, it works your muscles in a way. It works. It, it makes you work harder in terms of strength, right? But then the smaller the egg is, it's it's not as heavy, so it's not going to put that kind of stress on your muscles. But you will have to tune in more to feel it, you know. So the medium and the large have two different things that they challenge you with, and you can start with either one of them. Um, there's no clear cut rule to that. So I always want people just to know that. Um, also, drilled or undrilled. Um, for those of you who are wondering what I'm talking about, um, right here. I have like this green adventure is drilled, has a hole going through it. This one does not. It's a golden tiger's eye. So the purpose of the hole, which I also talk about in my egg basics video, is um, to put a string through it in case you want to do more advanced exercises like vaginal weightlifting and the tug of love and, and more advanced progressions. But it's also there in case you want to be able to easily remove the egg um, because some women are afraid it will get stuck, which is very, very rare. Um, it's really not a common thing. Like in my 12 years of working with it, it got stuck twice, and I'll do another video about that. Um, but even then, it'll come out because the, va the vagina is a one-way street, so it's not going to be stuck forever, right? So women are super paranoid about that. And um, 
learning how to release the egg and birth the egg sometimes is a learned thing. Some women can do it right away, some women have to work on it. Um, and I talk about this in my egg, base, my egg basics video, so I don't want to get into that too much because it's the whole science behind it. But generally what I feel is if a woman puts the egg in and it doesn't come out, like let's say she puts it in today, right now, I put it in right now, and in two hours I'm like, oh, I want to, I want to take it out, and I can't get it out. It's... I, I recommend not panicking. To me, I see that as the egg is doing some work that you're unaware of, and you need to let it do what it's doing. You know, it will come out when it's ready to come out. When your muscles are fatigued, you'll gently feel it releasing and falling out, you know. Um, and so these eggs are very mystical, and they do things that we're not aware of. So that I just see it that way, you know. Um, so you don't have to be paranoid about it. And I think not working with a drilled egg at first. As a, as a beginner, if you feel like you need to have the string so you can easily pull it out, it kind of feeds into your fears of like, oh my God, you know, like this might get stuck and some women are so afraid and there's nothing to be afraid of. Out of my 12 years of working with it, I've never had any infections or anything. Out of the 10 years of me teaching women, I've never seen anybody have like any infections or anything go wrong with it. Um, and so when it comes to choosing eggs, I say go with what resonates with you. You know, surrender to the process. Don't be, you know, women sometimes can just overthink things and want to be in control. These eggs, they help you to get more control over your your vaginal muscles and your sacred center, but they also teach you to surrender, you know, that you cannot always be in control. And that is the reality of life. A lot of people want to speak about these universal laws that you can control your life and you build your life, and that is not completely true. Yes, we play a role in it, and we should do our best to design our life and control our life the way we can, but we don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, in one way that that, that becomes completely clear is in childbirth. No matter how much a woman may visualize the most perfect birth ever, she may say, I want to have, you know, I, I really don't want to have a C-section, I want to have this vaginal birth. You never know what's going to happen in birth. And there are plenty of women who have ended up with C-sections when that is not what they envisioned, that's not what they meditated on, that's not what they wrote, all their positive affirmations, and still they ended up with a C-section. And then some of them feel this incredible guilt because of it. They feel, um, they feel like, you know, some type of loser or they failed. And it's, birth is a very mystical thing. We never know what can happen. All you can do is do your best to prepare yourself for it. And, um, you know, hope for the best. Of course, all the positive affirmations and visualizations are good. You should do it. But there's no guarantee. That's a universal law that is true. There are no guarantees in life. You know that as an athlete, you have people who win gold medals in the Olympics. And they, they tell stories about how ever since they were kids, they saw themselves in that podium getting that gold medal. Okay, but there are people who also had those same dreams and they didn't, never got to that place. You know what I'm saying? Who they might have lost in the Olympic trials or they may have come in fifth place in the Olympics and they had those same dreams. So there is such thing as luck too. People want to act like it's not, that's not the case and those who win want to act like, well, all you have to do is visualize and all you have to do is work hard. There's plenty of people who work hard and visualize and do everything and they, it doesn't always happen. So... We cannot completely be in control of our lives, you know. Like sometimes you have to surrender to what is. And you do your best to control what you can control. You do your best to work on yourself and to improve things. But there's no clear-cut prescription to, you know, this this mystical universe, okay. So I feel like working with um, these eggs help to teach you that. There's a lot of things that they teach you. And a lot of things that I can't explain, you just have to do the work. And so... Um, Again, I, I, I'm, this video is really uh, dispelling some myths, but really talking about how to choose an egg. Just letting you know that, that don't overthink it. Um, if something speaks to you, go with it. Research that stone. Know that that's what you may need at this time. And uh, kind of surrender to the process, okay? And um, I don't think I have anything else to say. Does anybody have any questions? I don't thank you for the compliments on my hair. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah. Um, I think that's it. I, I wanted to do a, I want to do a video. I was going to do another video on the myths of working with these eggs, and I kind of already discussed some of it in this video. But there are some others that I will discuss in another video. So I hope this video was helpful, um, and I hope it makes it easier for you to choose uh, an honey egg when you're ready. Okay, so have a great day, people, and um, be well. Bye.